you are pregnant right now, you have probably thought to yourself, okay, do I need to write a birth plan? Where do I begin? So amongst obstetricians and labor ward midwives, birth plans can sometimes get a bad rep. But I don't necessarily agree. Whether you're planning a birth on a labor ward or you're considering other options, having a birth plan, or as we prefer to call it, birth preferences, can really help you to feel more prepared and ready to adapt according to your situation. And this hopefully leads you with a more positive experience of your birth in the end. I'm Brooke, I'm an obstetrics doctor, and I work on labor ward all the time, seeing the pros and cons of different types of birth plans. So I'm here to help you to write the perfect one. So let's dive right in. And first off, who should make a birth plan? Honestly, not everyone needs to do it. If you feel confident and flexible about your birth, that's totally okay, especially if you've already given birth before, you're happy to go with the flow because you know what to expect. Also, some people just prefer to let health professionals guide them through at the time. And that's great if you know your team already, especially. But if you want to outline your preferences and you want to communicate them clearly to your healthcare team, a birth plan can be very helpful. Above all, your birth preferences are about you, they're for you. It's about you and your partner sitting down, researching or learning about what might happen, thinking about what choices might feel right for you, discussing them, explaining to each other what you might like to happen on the day. So yes, a printed birth card is a tool that can be used on the day, but you don't need a physical copy. You just need to think about the different outcomes so that you know loosely what you want and what choices you would make in different situations. What's the difference between birth plan and birth preferences? Well, I actually prefer the term preferences because as you might guess, birth doesn't always go exactly as planned. Preferences gives you the flexibility to adjust things as you need while still having your wishes known and taking it taken into account so this is where birth plans can get a bad rep if you've got a six page long document that's very fixed it's laminated and it says things like i do not want you to offer me an epidural i do not want forceps in any circumstance those might be the right choices for you but sometimes when the real life situation arrives you might feel different for example if you haven't experienced labor pain before do you really want it in writing laminated do not even want the option of an epidural even if you're really struggling to continue preferences is a way of saying i would prefer a medication free birth but it still keeps that framework loosely available if the situation shifts so you can have a plan a i don't want to have an epidural but plan b if you're going to offer me at an epidural please check with my partner first you know x y and z might be your preferences if that situation was to arise so you can have like an a b and c okay, so how do you prepare to fill out your birth preferences so as i mentioned before you should start by discussing your options and that can begin with your midwife or your doctor and again also as early in your pregnancy as you like you don't have to wait for them to raise your birth plan with you they can provide you with valuable insights based on your own health and your pregnancy so if you've had previous surgeries if you've got medical conditions or concerns about the baby they might be able to suggest what could be more advisable for you. For example, if you've got gestational diabetes and you take medication, they might be recommending for you to have an induction of labor at 39 weeks. And if you know about this in advance, it gives you the opportunity to discuss in more detail. What are the pros and cons of an induction of labor? What might that process look like for you? What choices will you have along the way? And as an example, I do also have a video about induction of labor on this YouTube channel. So you can watch that, think about again, what kind of positive interventions you might wish for to make that experience feel more personal and more enjoyable for you. Another really good idea before even sitting down to write your birth plan is to attend and classes and they can be in person if you've got those available to you you could just watch all the videos in the pregnancy and birth and postpartum categories on my youtube channel you might choose to read books about labor and delivery talk to other parents about their experiences although, although sometimes that can be helpful or unhelpful depending on how their births go and once you've got plenty of information you have an idea of the pros and cons of different birth options you then can start to fill out a birth plan so what should you be including well there's loads of birth preference templates online the nhs have their own one I've also linked my example in the description of this video. Of course, you can make up your own. You can just write your own document. Here are some sections that I would suggest that you should include. So first up, where are you going to give birth? So you can choose between home, a midwifery-led unit, or a hospital. If you're not sure which choice is right for you, again, consider discussing that with your healthcare provider. You will want to consider your pregnancy history, your previous surgeries, and what pain relief options you might wish for before you're going to decide which place you're going to give birth in because not all will be available in each place. Next up, companions. Who do you want with you during your labor? Is it your partner, a friend, a family member? I'd also just suggest, again, you have a plan A and plan B. You can have a backup option in case your partner's unexpectedly unavailable, they become unwell, or you've got childcare issues. Next, what about your birthing environment? Think about whether you'd like to use items like 
The birthing ball, stools, swings that could all help you to stay comfortable and mobile during labour. You could also ask if there's an option to have a tour around your birthing unit, either in person or online, so that you can see what options are available in that particular birthing unit. So check if your hospital has any facilities, special facilities like birthing pools. Do you want to use the water for pain relief or do you even want to give birth in water? Next, you can think about the monitoring. So discuss how you would like your baby's heartbeat to be monitored, if it's recommended for you to have intermittent auscultation or continuous monitoring. Some units also have an option for mobile monitoring so that if you need to have a continuous CTG, you could have a wireless telemetry, which means that you still can move around rather than being wired close to the bed. Next up, do you have a section about wanting to stay active? Do you want to stay mobile during your labour? Which positions would you think are the most comfortable for you? You can make a mention that maybe if you are having an epidural, you might want to stay active for as long as possible. Next section to consider is pain relief options. So explore your different options of pain relief, from breathing techniques, water immersion, medication, epidurals. Again, I've got a whole other video about pain relief options in labour. Next, your birth environment. Now this is an area that you can really customise. You can consider how do you want the lighting in the room? Do you want it dim? Any particular smells? Any music you want to listen to? Maybe you wish to arrange some photos or some affirmations that you can print out around the room for you to read. You can add electronic candles if you like. The next, thinking about specifically the second stage of labour or the pushing phase, do you have any preferences for your pushing position? How do you want to be encouraged? Do you want someone to cheer you along? Do you want them to be quiet? Also, who do you want to be present at that part of labour? You might also wish to mention the option of perineal massage and support for delivery, which can reduce the risk of tearing. Again, here I suggest including a plan B and a plan C in terms of your, the actual delivery. Assuming that you are intending to have a spontaneous vaginal delivery, you should also be thinking about what happens in plan B. So what if the doc doctors are recommending an instrumental birth? Are you open to all the types of instruments? Do you have a strong preference? Now, again, remember that usually which instrument is going to be used would be decided by the doctor, depending on which is more likely to be successful. But if you have strong preferences, if you have strong thoughts about this, this is where you should make a mention. Of. Another consideration is, do you wish to see the instruments before they're used, or do you want them to be hidden so you never see them? And the other section to think about is an abdominal birth. Do you have a preference about C-section? Do you feel that you would like to avoid a C-section in any circumstance? Or do you feel like actually you prefer to have a C-section than an instrumental delivery? You can make an Who would you like to have with you if you're going to have that cesarean section? What music would you like to be playing? Would you like early skin to skin time? Do you want to be shown the baby as they are being lifted out? So do you want to have the drapes dropped, for example? Again, I've got a separate video about C-sections, which I recommend watching even if you aren't planning to have a C-section. Finally, think about the episiotomy and the delivery of your placenta. So you can talk with your midwife or doctor about these procedures and your preferences. Ultimately, it's really important to remember that your birth preferences should be flexible. Births can be unpredictable. What matters the most is, it's true, the safety of you and your baby, but it is really important for you to have a good experience. And a part of how you feel at the end of your birth can come down to how your mindset was prepared before you went into labour. If you are open-minded, if you have thought about possible outcomes, but you're also open to the change of plan, a plan B and a plan C, you're less likely to be disappointed or devastated, for example, if you have a C-section that wasn't on the cards, as you'll have been prepared for that, as you'll have made some choices that made you feel involved in the decision-making. You'll be ready to make that experience the best that it can be, as well as giving you back that feeling of control. You should be prepared to adapt as needed and ask as many questions as you need to from your healthcare team to guide you. What if you're unsure about what to put in the birth plan? Well, that's perfectly normal. If you have any doubts about what to put in your birth preferences, discuss them with your midwife or your doctor. You can even do it on the day. You don't have to do it in advance, but they can provide you with more information to help you make those decisions. So as I mentioned at the start, you simply don't need to stress about any of this. You don't need to predetermine your choices. You can just go with your feelings in the moment. So there you have it. Some of my tips for writing your birth preferences. And if you've got any questions or you need some further guidance, feel free to comment below. I really want to help you to feel as prepared and confident as possible for your upcoming birth. So thanks for watching. And if it's helpful, please subscribe to the channel for more tips about pregnancy and childbirth.